So I wanted to do a video on my top six muscle building mistakes. This was actually inspired by Ryan Humberston's latest video on his five biggest mistakes. The reason I wanted to do this was because I still see people making these mistakes. And to be honest, if I was to do it all over again, these are things I definitely would not do. So make sure you stay tuned. What is going on guys? Welcome back to yet another video. I thought this was a much needed video because I still see people making these mistakes to this day. And if it's something I can help you avoid, whether you're beginning your journey, you're a bit stuck, or you're just an experienced lifter and you wanna take it to the next level. These are all mistakes everyone can avoid doing. So without further ado, number one. Number one. <laughs> you're gonna probably say like, wait, you're confusing me. So there's a fine line between eating too much and not eating enough. So I started off my first year of lifting without, I didn't eat enough basically. I wasn't training right, I wasn't eating enough. But anyway, the main thing, I wasn't eating enough, that's why I wasn't gaining weight. But if you eat too much, like I did soon after that, so I went from not eating enough to eating way, way too much. There was a big change. My calories probably doubled. I'm gonna estimate I went from about 2,000, maybe tripled even, to about 6,000 calories a day. Oh, you like donuts, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, have all the donuts in the world! <laughs> Based on the advice, eat as much as you can. You need to eat big to get big. Well, you gotta eat big to get big. So I got big, I put on a lot of fat. I know I've mentioned this point a few, time, point a few times even, but you want to gradually increase your calories. Start by looking at what you're currently eating, then adding small amounts. You don't wanna get super fat. I'm telling you now, <laughs> there's a lot of bad habits that will happen when you get super fat. You'll get used to, you expand your appetite and you'll get used to eating a certain amount and it will be harder than you think to shed and it'll be harder than you could ever imagine to get that really shredded, ripped look. Not saying it's impossible, you just make it way harder for yourself. It's, building muscle is a slow process, but when you do it slowly and you actually build muscle and don't add the extra fat on, you look unbelievable, believe me. So you wanna slowly add the calories. You can add like 50 a week, or you add just a small snack, see what happens to your weight, then add a tiny bit more, when you stop gaining the weight and progress like that. Number two, not following a progressive plan or not following a plan at all for that matter. I think that would only show me how unprepared you are to be on your own. So what I would do was I would take my program from a Flex magazine or from something like Muscle and Fitness and I would actually change it when I get the next issue of that Muscle and Fitness or that Flex magazine. So it would literally be changing week to week and there would be no marker for improvement. So I couldn't turn around and say, oh, the, the barbell curls I done last week, I done 20, now I'm doing 22 and a half, or something, some measure for that <laughs> instance. I couldn't do that because I was constantly changing the exercises. I don't advise doing that. First of all, you're never gonna see progress in specific exercises. And secondly, you're not gonna be able to progressively overload because you have no, you're going from that exercise to that exercise to that exercise and you're just mixing up way too much. Number three, changing your exercises too regularly. This sounds like one of the same as not having a progressive plan and it kind of is, but then again, it kind of isn't. You don't want to continuously change up the exercises. You want to, ha want to have some fundamentals and build on those fundamentals. If you keep changing the exercises up, you're never gonna acquire those skills needed to do those exercises correctly. Like the first time you did bench press, it's probably not the same as you do bench press now. You probably adapted, you find the perfect setup for you. You find how to contract the muscles properly during the bench press. And then when you see the strength increases, muscle usually does follow as long as you're sticking to the correct rep range. But remember that keeping the muscle guessing, don't take that too literally. Don't just throw anything at it and expect it to grow, respond and adapt. You need to make sure that you are doing a plan which is progressive, like I said in the previous point, and you're not changing exercises too often. 
So the fourth one, overtraining. Overtraining is not super easy to do when you're starting out, but then again, it can be as well. So if you're hitting the gym every single day or you're doing a crazy amount of volume, you're gonna get to a point where it's becoming too much. You're gonna get uh, little injuries like elbow tendonitis from maybe doing too many curls or too many presses. You're gonna get uh, just muscle overuse in certain areas and certain areas and you're not going to be able to feel a muscle in the same way because it's not recovering it's not repairing you don't grow in the gym remember that's the stimulus and what you eat when you eat and you recover appropriately then you will grow and come back stronger but if you're smashing it out not giving your body enough time to recover not only are you going to risk getting injured you're also going to risk just not growing at all so ideally for each muscle group every week you want to be doing between 12 and 20 sets you may be a beginner starting off on much less but that's completely fine you can build up to that but between 12 and 20 is the sweet spot and if you have muscles you want to prioritize so your arms you'll be doing more on the higher side and if you have muscles that you you know, you're okay with maintaining, you'll be doing more on the lower side as well. The fifth one, you're gonna, probably gonna say, what? <laughs> Lifting too heavy. You don't wanna lift too heavy to the point where you're just loading the body and you're not loading the muscles. You wanna load the muscles. The whole goal with a workout is to break down the muscles, cause those microscopic tears for the muscles to come back stronger. Create that muscle damage. I know my last video was on DOMS and I said that you, know, you don't have to, uh, but you're still going to create that damage. You're still going to break down the muscles in some way, shape or form. But it doesn't mean you have to get DOMS the next day, but you want to break down the muscles. That's for sure. Uh, you want to feel them a bit tender. You don't want to feel like you ne haven't worked out the next day. So remember, if you're overloading the joints and the surrounding tissue, all you're going to do is, first of all, cause injury. Second of all, you're not going to break down the muscle. You're not triggering growth. If you, Growth is your number one the number one goal here, which it should be watching this video, it could be secondary, but um, still, it, within context of growing, you need to make sure you're overloading the muscle properly and not just overloading the body. So how do you do that? You don't really want to be doing anything below four reps, and most of your reps want to be between, I'd say, six and about 20. I know it's a vast range, but I'd say for smaller muscles, you want to be on a higher end between 15 and 20, stuff like biceps, triceps, shoulders, forearms if you train them, calves if you train them as well, and for stuff like bench press, squats, deadlifts, you want to be on the lower end between like six to 10 reps. So that's how you want to train. And you want to make sure you're not just doing those reps, you're doing them correctly with a good strict form. And to Keep in mind what a good strict form is. You want to be able to control it eccentrically. So if you're doing a squat, controlling on the way down when the muscle, muscle, muscle lengthens and you want to be, say with the bench press as well, when the muscle lengthens, you want to be able to control it on the way down. I would say two to three seconds and on the way up, one to two seconds. If you can do that without obviously involving unnecessary movement like jump, like swinging from side to side with bicep curls and whatnot, then you're in good nick and that's probably an appropriate weight. But if you're rocking from side to side, you've got no stability, you're probably using a weight that is too heavy for you at that moment of time. So the last, but definitely not least, you don't want to bulk up and then cut really, really fast. So if you bulk up to a certain amount, say you've added, I don't know, 20 pounds, and some of that's going to be fat, that's normal. You just don't, you want to be building more muscle than you are fat obviously. <laughs> so you don't want to quickly pull that weight all the way down and get super shredded in six weeks. Even 12 weeks can be too much if you're going from like say 20% body fat all the way down to like six. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be way too short of a period. So doing that and being in a calorie deficit and a super low calorie deficit for too long can mess up your testosterone which is gonna, uh, can mess up your sleep can mess up your mood and everything along with that, which is all, all those things are important for growth, not necessarily the mood, but eh, some can argue that. But testosterone is key to growing and building muscle. So you wanna make sure you're slowly and gradually doing it. You don't wanna be in a surplus of like five, 600 one week, and then all the way down to a deficit of five, 600 the next week. Then you're down 
over a thousand calories. That's, that's absolutely crazy. You want to take it down slowly, but surely. What I recommend actually doing is not bulking super crazy. Don't go beyond 12. No, I lie. Don't go beyond 15% body fat. If you haven't got a measure for that, you can roughly guesstimate using photos. But if you don't go beyond 15% body fat, to get super shredded won't be that hard. I don't typically go beyond like 13 to 15%. I stay between 10 and around 13% body fat all year round. So if I do want to get super shredded for a photo shoot or for a holiday, it'll take me four to six weeks and I can do that super gradually and it won't affect my quality of life in any way, shape or form. So those are my top six. While they may have all sounded like the same, they're not really entirely the same. They're different components of the same thing. I mean, at the end of the day, you need, just need to make sure you're eating well and that's a big topic within itself. You're training right and recovering right as well. Those three things are super important when putting on muscle. And those, all the points I covered, the six points, cover those in quite a bit of detail. If you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, time to click that subscribe button. If you want to follow me on Instagram, that's at Adam Scott Fit. Also, if you would like a personalized program for myself, some personal coaching, one-to-one -one coaching online, wherever you are in the world, go to my website. It's finally launched, www.adamscottfit.com. And if you want to reach out to me personally, that's adam at adamscottfit.com. And until the next video, keep pushing those limits.